back in Belize and taking part in an expedition organised by Graham Jackson at 7B Overland. We're going to be tackling the famed Camp 6 road in the Belizean jungle. It's going to take us some scientific data to help the scientists in the area who are unable to get access to the areas that we're able to with the vehicles we have. This is day one and we're heading off into the forest today. So just for context, I lived here for about 18 months. I haven't been back for 15 years. I wish I'd come back sooner, but partly it's quite expensive relatively to get to Belize and quite an effort. And if you're going to spend that money, I've had the travel bug, so I've always wanted to travel to other places. So I've never come back to Belize. And it's also partly that I've not wanted to replace the memories I have with new memories, potentially, subconsciously, I think. But it's kind of come to a head and I thought it was the right time to return. And the road up into the mountains I used to drive regularly, several times a day, um, in some cases, uh, it's starting to be tarmac. So I wanted to come and at least relive a bit of that experience whilst it was still possible to drive it untarmacked. Just hearing the sounds here, so many memories came flooding back. I can't tell you what this place means to me. It's, you know, I found my soulmate here. She's amazing and, and, and we fell in love in this place. I got given a ton of responsibility as a pretty green 22 year old. And part of that was looking after two Land Rovers that would break down every other month. And I just got so much self-confidence from this place. I had a lot of mixed emotions coming back. Excited, trepidatious, etc. Insert adjective here. But seeing the sunrise, the jungle, I mean... There we go. And we haven't even got into the mountains yet. So we're heading out today. Those are the vehicles up there. And uh, curious to see what the state of the road is from now on. So there might be a few videos in this series, so join me um, as we attempt to tackle this road and do some science along the way. Everything good to go? I think so. I'd hope so. Let's kick the tyres a bit. Yeah, they look good. We uh, don't really have a choice to. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Graham. Graham Jackson. Hello, everybody. I am here. Seven PO of land. Yes. Famed, famed more in the US probably than the UK. Uh, probably, yeah, but I'm not that famous. <laughs> I think I've got, what, 300 followers. But when you turn up at the big shows, then, then people will recognise you probably. Yeah. It's a bit embarrassing because honestly, I. I'm recognised by more people than I recognise. <laughs> That's just age. Yes. Well, yeah. well, that seems to have been happening for a long time. Yes. Cool. <laughs> this is a good truck. Yes, it's brand new in the drive train world, but uh, okay. 1985 originally. Oh, yeah. And I actually got off your website, I got the uh, military um, reg. And I tried to get a custom plate with a military reg on it. Oh, uh, really? The state of Colorado wouldn't do that for me. So the only reg I could get, custom reg, was the um, uh, the one that Withams put on it before I bought it. So, so that's why it's got a British reg. Oh, uh, okay. So this is slash was a Tythonius. You may have just heard I said Tythonius. And what I meant to say was Tythonus or Tithonus, depending on how you pronounce it. But unlike Graham, I hadn't had my morning coffee yet. Yes. So that's the roll cage from the Titanius? Yes. It is? Yes. And so is the soft top. Okay. All of the body stuff is. Yeah. Um, that bit of green poking there is Titanius. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. All, all of the inside of the door is a different <laughs> colour. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. No, the only thing that I've modified so far is... Um, well, the entire drivetrain. So it's now a 300 TDI with a MT82. Yeah, there we go. Six speed. You see that? I see you got the tunnel on there. Yeah, so that's the yeah. Puma tunnel. Uh, this is where the Puma wiring harness goes through, but obviously this car doesn't have quite so many wires. So. Graham's motivation for this expedition is to complete this route, having attempted it twice before which both times resulted in failure, which is the dictionary definition of a vendetta. For myself, I used to drive part of the route to get access to a project site, 
but I never went further and I always wondered if it was possible to follow the route to its end. I knew people that had tried and failed to do the route, so for me, it's firmly been on the bucket list for the last 15 years. As for the rest of the team, we have Eric. Hey, we'll get the camp. Hey, camp. A medic and a past member of many expeditions with Graham. Nathan is a professional photographer, having completed many of his own expeditions. That's right, it's Nathan Hyman, the man of a thousand bad accents. <laughs> the only other thing you need to know is, he's the Jeep owner. And Josh is a professional filmmaker and V8 Disco One owner, who's making a documentary about our endeavours. <laughs> to a much higher standard than I am, I might add. There is also a sixth member of this expedition, but they don't want to appear on camera. So if you see any blurry bits, that's who it is. So not only is it an off-road expedition, it's also a film shoot, with all the challenges that that entails. The Jeep is basically the camera truck, so for a working title, let's call this a Land Rover Off-Road Expedition in Belize, through the heart of the jungle, on a route not driven in over 10 years that is steeped in failure with a group of people thrown together in one of the harshest environments on earth where all of the previous attempts were in the wet season so to improve our odds we're doing this in the dry season aka the hottest time of the year as i said the working title so far these guys have traveled over two and a half thousand miles from colorado whereas myself I've just flown in from the UK. So they're worn out and I'm a little jet lagged. But for now, it's time to head out, load up on a last few minutes supplies and depart for the jungle. You got a roll cage though? It's got a roll cage. It's got a squeak too. Oh, I <laughs> no talking, just driving. Squeak gone. <laughs> Perfect. So if the hammer's land over tool number one, what's the pliers? Four or five? The crowbar comes next. Yeah, yeah and then the... Uh, gaffer the tape's up there. Gaffer tape's up there. Yeah. Um, zip ties, obviously, quite up there. So yeah, you're probably <laughs> four or five. <laughs> The driver yesterday was saying there's roundabouts everywhere now. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> morning, how you doing? Morning, morning, how you guys doing? Doing great. Let me uh, unlock the thing and I need some diesel. Full? Full, full. So he's diesel with death. So diesel with what? Uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Oh, we call it ad blue in the UK. Uh, or you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. It goes slow because there's a filter in there. There's that little uh, that mesh, yeah. You just have to slow pump. Has it got the pull-out thing? Yeah, it does. It does, yeah. Because we had that on one of ours. Yeah, it's, it's quite just, useful. It really jams up. On the pump. This one, not so much. This one, yes. So put this one on slow, that one will be fine. All these little quirks and oddities. Even just filling it up, you've got to explain. <laughs> it's like, you don't do it like that. <laughs> How much do you think it needs? Um, I don't know, I didn't know what the gauge. Because I'm already, uh, um, he put the you extended range on. Did you, you put the extended range on here? No. I, I don't either, just. No. It's. I mean, it's. it's yeah. low, That's right? huge, it's that is low, absolutely right? huge. Clearance wise. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how much goes in. <laughs>
driving gallop. So we're filled up. Not going to fill up again for another week, probably. Yes, not going to fill up for another week. <laughs> I like the way you put that. <laughs> I don't think there's another fuel station between where we're going and. No. Yeah, so. No. Hopefully we've got enough range. I'm going to run down to the other shell station to grab some kerosene. Um, I'll catch you guys. I'll pick you up on the way back. Your fog light's on. What? Your fog light. Where's that You're a Land Rover aficionado. Where's the button for the cooling seats? <laughs> cooling seats. Cooling seats. Yeah. yeah. They re rebuilt it. it. Used to be car washing. It's for water at the moment, but it will, it will be for kerosene. We're torn now, and this is the Kanandru with Tarmac Road. So we, do we take the route up there? It's not Tarmac most of the way, and it used to be quicker. Or we can go down the highway, turn right, and take the other route up into the mountains. But that bit's now tarmac. So that's probably the quicker way. That's probably the quicker way. This will be the more fun way. The more fun way. We should do the more fun way. Yeah. We can do. There'll still be a bit of tarmac. I guess where the barrier is. All I want to see is where the end of the tarmac is. Yeah. So we'll still get that one down that way. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Hey guys, we decided on a more adventurous route up into the mountains. So we're going to actually take a left here, not a right. Back to the tarmac, we're going to take a dirt route up into the mountains that will help us to know about. So we're going left. Copy that. So that would be the turn off I would go down. To get home? Yeah, to get home. Okay. That would be the one. Then I'd usually come out here, fill up, and then go straight up. So it's up this one. And I'd use that filling, that would be the air filling. I'd always okay. check the tyres, check they're on the pressures, and then just <laughs> head up. <laughs> yeah, upgrading of Caracol Road Project. Yeah, this way up here. So this might be fairly tarmac. This is dirt before when you were here. This was tarmac here. The tarmac would end just at the top of the hill and beyond. Yeah, that's probably one of the strongest memories is knowing where the tarmac ended and where the dirt began. You know, that was always, it was always when you were leaving, that was when things got kind of real. You're leaving town. It's right. this, and then when you're getting back, it's when you've got the relief from the shaking and the noise of the dust. Yeah. The time it was like the relief where you'd be like, ah, oh, now I can think again, my brain's yeah. Yeah, in a yeah. good place. We actually uh, try and instill that in people as a, uh, as a training tool, you know, when you switch into four wheel drive because you're going off what you diff lock when you yeah. do it, you're actually changing the mode from, you know, operating a toaster to actually operating an off road mechanical device that can kill, kill people. And they, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, having that diff lock, I never, I never used to drive diff lock on this road, yeah, okay. but I did after I spun out, yeah, yeah. Um, and our mechanic kept telling us to, so I learned that the hard way, yeah. but it, it does become that very good, you know, mental shift, mental shift. change the setup on the vehicle, yeah. and change your driving style, and, and, and your maximum speed. I mean, we're going yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. 60 now, you know, I always found it useful to put in a have a maximum speed no matter what because it's very easy to get into fifth gear the fifth gear wants to go 80 but you shouldn't drive 80 so saying that you just stay in fourth really just helps um... so the time I ended back there okay so that's where it ended so this is all new now um, this is where my colleague uh, it jumped out of the transfer board jumps out of um, out of high range into neutral and he got stranded there and I had to drive out of here and and then my missus around about here the prop shaft fell off but she, that was after I'd left she had to deal with that by herself she did very well get underneath take off the other you know the spanners right yeah I struggled to get up in low range second when three cylinders I almost just got over the top of the hill was it like driving on the wrong side of the road or the wrong side of the steering wheel. Completely used to it by now. Yeah. Because I have to jump between my left hand drive defender and my right hand drive yeah. defender, my right hand drive trip carrier. So I can do either side of the road, either side of the car. It takes me probably half an hour and I switch. 
interesting that I was used to this a long time ago because in South Africa, my dad had a uh, left-hand drive Range Rover. Oh, uh, right. And so I remember as a kid when we were going on holidays, my mum was always like, yeah. you know, watching, telling him when to pass, yelling at him when he got it wrong, you know. So, and he was a very aggressive driver, like a <laughs> racing driver. Yeah. Um, and so half the time, you know, she'd say, no, no, don't go, and he'd pull out and have a look and then just go for it. And she's like, no! Oh! Well, we had to set up a we had to set up a system because many times I misheard no as go. Yes. yes. So we had uh, wait and clear. I think it was. Yeah. They have to make the money Yeah. The tarmac had started sooner than I was expecting. I've been told it was almost halfway done with. So in the next episode, we'll be seeing how far actually the progress goes, as well as discussing some of the pros and cons. Lots more interesting videos coming after that. And if you want to see a trailer of the documentary of the whole expedition done in a more professional way, then check out the links below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.